Welcome back, YouTubers, to another Monday Night Raw review right after Survivor Series, one of the big four pay per views with us, the British Fist. Gotcha! NJ Enthusiastic, as usual. I'm Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me, nodding in anticipation for this review, it's none other than the right and honorable NJ. What's up? Nice little thing there, I like it. Yeah, it's all good. Subscribe up above, of course, like this video, and comment your thoughts on Raw down in that comment section below. Or actually, contact us in the link in the video box below. Why are you so damn excited? Triple H wasn't on this Raw. No, no, no. But a certain other guy who he marked out for was kind of on Raw tonight, but we'll start. I just want to start off with a little gripe. Um, we were promised two things tonight, three things. We were promised the guest host, Brodus Clay, and Triple H. But did WWE give us any of these three things? No! And WWE, if you want to make us a believer of your advertisements, you're going to have to start delivering a couple of these things. I'm just saying. And even though the guest host thing we don't really care about, it was still advertised. Bros play thing we've been waiting, waiting, waiting for. Triple H, well, I guess if he's still injured, he's still got three weeks now, so whatever. All right, then. We opened up this week with CM Punk, which makes total sense. After he won the title at Survivor Series, nice to see him get some. Nice to see him open a show with some like time now that he's the new champion. That's very true. Let me just sit here so I can get comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> he says now he wants to be an agent of change. Yeah, because that that worked before before they fucked your character up. WWE. Um, it was a nice little segment for him to be able to talk about his win and how this meant something to him. It's nice. It was good. It was okay. And he, just like every other champion that's been WWE champion, he's going to try to make changes to the WWE championship. Okay. Yeah, but then John Laurinaitis comes out and Punk does what he does best and pretty much owns John Laurinaitis and says that he's a worthless piece of shit. <laughs> and Laurinaitis makes two matches tonight. Yes. He makes Punk versus Del Rio for next week in a rematch. Uh, I just wonder why they didn't make the pay-per-view match, and I wonder now what they're going to be doing at the pay-per-view. Does this mean that Dario is going to be out of the title picture, or why is this on Raw? I'm not really too. I'm not really following this. The only way I can see it is that it's going to end unclean next week, and they still have a match at uh, TLC. Yeah, maybe. And he also makes Punk versus Ziggler tonight for our main event. Even though Punk did point out that the people wanted to see Ryder versus Ziggler. Instead, we're going to be getting Zack Ryder versus Del Rio tonight. So at least we've got some matches from this, some matches announced. I'm just not sure why they're having a potential TLC match on Raw next week. Yeah, and when I heard about uh, CM Punk's match, I just thought, okay, our US champion, you had him go up first in that traditional final five, five <laughs> and now you're going to have him go against our new WWE champion, CM Punk. So I guess an effective opener in the sense that it, it announced some matches, which is good, and it also gets CM Punk some mic time and... Um, yeah, there are some things we have problems with, but it's a decent opener, I guess. Um, then we get what to me was a good, <laughs> Zack Ryder versus Alberto Del Rio in potentially what is basically a squash match. And because we hate our, because we hate Zack Ryder, even this is a great match for us, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. The only problem I had with it is that there was quite a few times when you saw Ryder beating down on Del Rio, mm -hmm. and I really thought it'd just be a quick match. Del Rio's gonna have the most offense and just beat. Zack Ryder, yeah. but no. I can see what they're trying to do here. They're trying to get Del Rio heat by beating a fan favourite, because as we've seen from previous rules, the reason probably why the belt was taken off him is because he doesn't really get too much heat. He didn't really get too much heat in this match either, but it was essentially a glorified job match. It's typical angry post pay per view losing his title. Del Rio, remember when he beat up John Morrison? I just I just can't believe how much Ryder, uh, how much offence Ryder got in. It was a bit like, yeah, but you know, going against Del Rio, you wouldn't expect him to get that much in. But I'm fine no. with Del Rio winning in two and a half yeah, minutes. Yeah, Del Rio ended up winning, so we can't be really complaining about that now. No, Swagger versus Sheamus was next in a match which apparently was wanted by Swagger after Sheamus kept near him and got disqualified. Uh, it makes sense, but we saw this on Raw. We've seen this a bit of this as well, so now we're seeing it again. It's kind of like, oh god, how much do you want to trot this match out there? It's just getting a bit boring now. Well, a follow match on the pay per view makes sense, even though it is a repeat. I still think it makes sense, and to be honest. It was an okay match. Yeah, Swagger pretty much gets no heat, though. That's the problem. It's just that he comes out and he's like, Argh. and he just looks like a dork to me. Um, Sheamus uses the knees that gets him disqualified last night. It was decent storytelling, and Sheamus wins the match clean. So it keeps Sheamus going and Jack Swagger falling, which I don't really care about. <laughs> and even though Sheamus ended up winning, Swagger did have quite a lot of move in it and uh, power over Sheamus. But of course, Sheamus was going to come out on top and continue his push. Of course, even though he got disqualified that final five, which was fucking ridiculous and didn't really get a chance to showcase his skills at all. Um, we then get a very short Kevin Nash promo talking about being the only survivor of his group. And, you know, it was a rather short and pointless segment, in my opinion, unless they're going to be having some sort of match at TLC. But... 
They need Triple H in those segments now, don't they? If they're going to try and develop something for TLC. All I can say is if we've all Nash promos together, maybe they're going to lead up to some importance. Yeah. But on his own, nothing's there. No, there's a reason why he was the lowest drawing champion of all time, MJ. <laughs> he just... <laughs> <laughs> um, after the break we see Rhodes on the mic basically talking about now how he's being unmasked it's unleashing something which is making him unbeatable you know that I'm a Rhodes mark MJ and you guys out there so I love to see Cody Rhodes on the mic and I love to see him beat Santino in one minute he looked like a star out there Cody Rhodes the next World Heavyweight Champion apart from maybe Wade Barrett I'm just saying though, being a vote, being a Cody Rhodes mark. What do you think about this? Well, what I'm going to say <laughs> is, what we're in another Santino site. Yes, it's not going to lead anywhere, but he's been featured on TV, so I'm happy about that. Cody Rhodes. All I'll say is that he's not actually got any direction until after the match. After the match, he goes straight to Booker T and splashes his drink in Booker T's face yeah. to set a statement. So we heard news a couple of weeks ago they were going to do a Booker T, Cody Rhodes sort of filler feud, and it kind of looks like they're going to go down that way. I'm fine with this as long as Booker T does the typical veteran thing and puts Cody Rhodes over. And it gives something for Cody Rhodes to do, I guess, on SmackDown while they're finding someone new for him to feud with for that IC, but maybe a Teddy Yassi. Even though Booker T's had it, he's still going up against uh, a long-term wrestler in the past, mm. so it should be a, a decent... Filler feud. Yeah, so not a bad segment. I do like the the use of job like the use of jobbers in these first couple of segments, which is good. Um, we got that kind of throughout the night. But next we had our our main event: Dolph Ziggler, our US champion, versus CM Punk in our our main event. Um, this was a great match. You know, these guys can both go in the ring, and it was a great match. I'm just sort of bottling my mind as to what this match might have achieved in the long run, even though they did make Ziggler look like he could beat against the champion, which is good for me. Well, the way I look at this match is that it's put Ziggler into a main event match, because CM Punk's a main eventer, yep. gave him a 15-minute plus match, mm -hmm. and it's definitely shown that Ziggler can be up there with other main eventers. It's going to be a good push for him. So is this going to be a tease that he's going to be in the main event soon? I wonder. Punk wins clean. I'm a little bit disappointed with that, because this is a match I would like to see happen on a pay-per-view at some point, I imagine. I'd like to have seen the match finish a little bit unclean, maybe not be such a clear result. But at least it made it look like Ziggler could compete. I just wonder what they're going to be doing with the US Championship now, like if they're going to make him lose it and then move him up into that main event scene, possibly at TLC after the Del Rio rematch, who knows? Well, there's two things I want to say about this. First, we had the whole, uh, in the match, they both cheat to try and pin. That was yeah. funny to see. <laughs> and I'm thinking, as uh, Ziggler's been booked as a, a bit of a bad US Champion, I think he's going to drop it in the near future, yeah. and then they're going to concentrate on pushing him up towards the top. Maybe. I would be fine with that, personally. Um... We then have some. We then have a video vignette, which was pretty much Kane, wasn't it? But I at least they're showing some vignettes to bring him back. And we should, we saw the mask burning, so it kind of leaves us wondering: Is he going to have the mask or not? I did enjoy this segment. Oh yes, it was awesome. We're have Kane returning. Oh yes, but the thing is, at the minute, big show mark here and that thing going on. But anyway, Kane's returning soon. Oh yes, I think it'll happen at TLC as a continuation to the Mark Henry feud with Kane. Probably, who knows. Uh, we also saw this strange sort of video video vignette on, on NoDQ.com. This sort of It's Begun 2012 vignette that we saw with the little kid. I wonder what that's going to lead to. Uh, to be honest, it was just there. We weren't actually advertised on TV, so I think at the minute it's not got too much importance. On, on Twitter, though, it was said that I'm going to plug in Twitter again. That it, apparently it was there during one of the Twitter references, but I don't know. We'll have to see if that actually leads anywhere, but the whole Kane vignette was pretty good. Very um, good. We then have a Big Show promo. Um, he pretty much... Follows on from Spurs, he talks about being better and stronger than Henry and how Henry knew how the title was slipping away, so he had to get DQ'd. Um, and he delivered on his promise that only one of them was going to come away from Survivor Series. And the, the main thing to wrap up his conversation is uh, promo, I'll be here waiting. Exactly. So, um, you know, it's good that, that Raw are trying to capitalise on something that SmackDown is actually getting me looking forward to their show. Um, I guess it's just good Big Show being on the show and, you know, continuing that whole thing. So, yeah, effective. In, and it was short, it was effective. Effective, but even though they could have saved us for SmackDown because it just weren't a follow on from end up in yeah. later in the night. Bishop didn't have a match, so it should be saved for SmackDown. I must admit, though, I am looking forward to seeing what's going to happen with the whatever championship on SmackDown. Now, that's one thing I'm actually kind of looking forward to SmackDown for at the moment. Well, past injuries we've seen from Mark Henry, he's able to recover quickly, so I think it'd be back before TLC. Yes, uh, maybe so, uh, which would set up their rematch pretty well. Um, Wade Barrett versus Kofi Kingston. Um, but before that, we had a fucking stupid Divas thing. But unfortunately, 
Unfortunately tonight, we have some bad news. Because WWE can't deliver on their advertisements, we here at the British Fist have decided that, well, it's not really our fault. The Tea Time guys couldn't make it tonight because they had some really important business elsewhere. But they said, they texted me earlier, and they said that they will be here for SmackDown. So expect the British Fish Tea Time guys to be reviewing the Diva segment on SmackDown this week. Looking forward to that one. And all I'll say is that, again, it was disappointing because it's normally a weekly visit we have with them. And for them to turn up on Raw, it's disappointing. But like I said, they, they've done a great job on Raw, so why not do a great job on SmackDown? Yes, try and shift some of the ratings to SmackDown, eh, NJ? That's, that's very true. Right then, let's get to Barrett Kofi Kingston. Um, this was an interesting match. It got 11 and a half minutes, um, and with adverts, but after two minutes, Orton comes out. Does this kind of show that they're going to be doing an Orton Barrett feud? It kind of does, doesn't it, really? Especially after the whole Team Orton Barrett thing. And is this a good thing, do you feel? Well, two things. Number one, I know it's script, I said this during the show, but Barrett was holding Kofi Kingston up. I was like, come on, slam him, finish the match! <laughs> anyway, back to the thing. I think, to be honest, yes. This is going to be a possible uh, feud going into the next couple of weeks to the next pay-per-view, and I don't see why not. Uh, Way back, he's definitely got pushed towards the main event wrestlers. He's got pushed towards Orton after we saw uh, the last pay per view. I'm thinking, go for it. Yeah, I think they should do with Orton what they did with Mark, or what they did with Orton and Mark Henry. Yeah, put the guy over, maybe getting him ready for Royal Rumble. Who really knows? Um, Barrett was on top for most of this match, though, wasn't he? It was. And that was good to see. But all I did, I did see is that Kofi did have quite a bit of bends. The match did go on quite a bit longer than mm. I was expecting. But uh, again, Wade Barrett looks strong. Still a decent match, in my opinion. And um, Wade Barrett does the wasteland and stares at Orton at the end. I did like that. He stared at Orton while he was doing the wasteland with, with authority. And then he cuts a promo on Orton afterwards. And Orton kind of goes, well, Yeah, did you hear he that? Here is your winner. Wade Barrett. Yeah, you, you didn't react to my scare tactic. Oh, you did then. No, I was, I'm just not as intimidating as Wendy Orton, obviously. Uh, so yeah, an effective segment, I guess. It, it starts the groundwork for an Orton Barrett feud, and it was a decent match. It makes Barrett the Barrett barrage continues. Well, I do have one question. Oh, what's that? Um, Randy Orton's last uh, uh, feud. What, the chance for him to push someone up to the main event. <laughs> How did that turn out? Oh, stop! Stop it! Because it was Cody Rose. You know yeah, what? Now we've got to expect Orton to help Wade Barrett out. But Ray Barrett has had a massive push, so I expect it to happen. Just saying. Main event of the evening. We all knew it was going to be John Cena, despite the fact that there was all sorts of other stuff at the show with Punk, etc. Cena basically comes out and talks about The Rock last night. And one thing that bugged me here was he showed no hate. It was all like, oh, Rock did this. It was fantastic. It was fantastic team. I was like, show some damn hate. The guy Rock bottomed you. Why do you have to be so damn respectful? It's not really a feud, is it, now, that Rock is, that Cena's been so damn respectful to him? It's stupid, in my opinion. He was being respectful, but he said, this is all added up to what is going to happen, no matter what now, at WrestleMania. He mentioned quite a bit of WrestleMania, so it's all the build-up to that now. Despite the lackluster ending to Survivor Series, it really didn't really hype it up in any way or form, while also helping Awesome Truth. But there we go. But the awesome truth interfere, and the segment got a lot better from then on. As it was kind of funny because there was a lot of truthful speaking. You have awesome truth interfering as saying that Cena's ego won't allow him to show how much Rock showed him up last night. And I'm thinking, what about you, awesome truth? You kind of lost. And then they talk about Rock outshining Cena, which is very true. Which needed to be said because that was actually the truth. Rock outshone everyone in that match in that main event, didn't he? Oh yes, the great one did. <laughs> Do you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> Pizza and garlic bread. <laughs> uh, we also have Cena get on the mic as well, talking about how Awesome Truth weren't a legitimate threat, which again is true. You've got to admit that they weren't a legitimate threat. And this all leads to what, pretty much? Basically, when Cena eventually leaves the ring, thank God, Awesome Truth are in the ring left to each other, and it comes down to... When they go up to the ramp to go and get Cena, Miz does his Skull Crush finale on our truth Yeah, so it looks like the breakup of Awesome Truth. Um, I will say this, though. As much as this was okay, it's just this soon. I really don't see where they're going to go with this Awesome Truth thing now. It looks like they're still going to both be heel. Uh, I don't really know. I think it might have happened a little bit too soon, but there we go. Well, my two thoughts about this is, one, Awesome Truth haven't really left a mark. They didn't come to the tag yeah. champs and leave a big mark like that. The second thing is, to be honest, with what gone... Awesome Truth, yes, they could have gone for the tag titles, but now there's no rock. They need to go separate ways and go on becoming single wrestlers and maybe push towards the main event mm. or something good like that. It does make me wonder what they're going to be doing with them. In, uh, though. I mean, with CM Punk as champion, it gives them two heels to possibly feud with, maybe. Um, so that might be the case. Um, 
Overall, an, an effective segment, I guess. I mean, a lot of truth was spoken in this segment, wasn't it? With Rock and with Cena and Awesome Truth talking about how The Rock showed them all up and shit and how Cena was second rate. Um, what were your overall thoughts on Raw then? Okay, yes, there was things missed, like we said at the very beginning of this review, but overall, the right guys were shown tonight. Mm -hmm. It gave us the, not a follow on from the pay per view, but it definitely gave us wrestlers that we needed to see. Yes. The following show. And I'm thinking the main event, again, the two, like the uh, Wade Barrett thing was good to see. Wade Barrett and Orton getting that feud thing going. Mm -hmm. And the Cena and Awesome Truth. Yes, it followed them for WrestleMania, uh, the Survivor Series, and left us wondering what's going to happen next. Yeah, I mean, they did, like Andrew said, they highlighted the right guys tonight. You know, guys like Wade Barrett, Cody Rhodes, Sheamus, Randy Orton, Dolph Ziggler, CM Punk, Del Rio. They highlighted the, the right guys. I found it interesting how a lot of them were SmackDown guys, personally. I think it shows how much SmackDown is coming on as a show. Um, it, it was a decent follow-on for Survivor Series. It didn't do much for the next pay -view. That's my one gripe for tonight's show. It didn't do too much for the next pay-per-view, even though we saw some feuds. It didn't announce many matches, which I thought they could have done, maybe. Um, that was the only issue I had with it. Overall, it, I mean, I like the use of the jobber, the jobber matches to highlight the right people. The Ziggler punk match was very good, despite the fact I'm not really sure where it's going. The opener was decent. The main event was decent, I guess, even though I think Middle Street may have broken up a little bit too soon, in my opinion. Uh, that's really up for debate, to be honest. But I think it was, it's still a decent Raw, probably one of the better Raws, just because they, they've done some booking decisions correct in this Raw. So I, but it's like a, a B- minus show for me, maybe C+. I'm not really sure. It wasn't the most entertaining Raw, but it did some things which I wanted it to do. Well, I'm going to give it a B-. minus. It could, could have gone a B if things were done a little bit differently in some areas, but I'm going to give it a B-, minus just because now we've seen a possible matches with Cody Rose, Wade Barrett, Awesome Tree's breaking up. Big shows mentioned about Mark Henry, so it was fun for the pay per view, so I, I like that. Yeah, setting up some things. We're just to see in the coming weeks what they're going to be setting up for that TLC mm -hmm. pay per view they got in December. Um, right, that's pretty much it from us, guys. Make sure you get your thoughts on Raw after Savari Series in that comment section below and keep on commenting and watching our Savari Series review as well, which is up there for you guys to watch. NJ, do what you do best, like The Rock does in promos. Okay, people, thank you very, 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 very much for watching our video. And tune in for next week when we're going to be talking about this whole punk and Del Rio thing. And that has been it from The British Fist, which is Mr. Parking 01, and me, NJ. Goodbye.